Hello friends, welcome back to Dave the Dev's Game Dev Tutorials. Today I'm going to show you how to use Godot's curve resource to improve your games, and I'll be doing that with a rocket ship. And at the end of this video, I'll show you how I'm using curves in my new game prototype, Project Root. So let's get to it. You may be thinking to yourself, David, why are you talking about curves? That sounds incredibly boring. Well, let me tell you, if you want to level up your game making skills, curves are one of those things that you didn't know you needed until you learned how to use them. So what are curves really? Well, a curve resource in Godot is basically just a function. Not a function in a programmatic sense, but in a mathematic sense. So I'm talking about a function where you input an x value and out pops a y value. Mathematic functions are an extremely important concept to understand if you want to be a game programmer, and it's probably a good idea to be able to make custom functions that follow required specifications. But if you're someone like me, it is sometimes difficult to have an intuitive understanding of how a function works just by looking at this jumble of symbols. So instead of working with functions like this, we can use Godot's curve resource and work with functions visually like this. The bottom horizontal axis represents your input x value, and the left vertical axis is your output y value. In this way, it is easy to understand what a function is doing, and we can use this visualization to easily create custom functions by adding and manipulating points. Let's look at an example of how we can use a curve to land SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. This example project can be downloaded from the Dave the Dev GitHub page linked below in the description. The landedness value is a value between 0 and 1 and determines how far along the process of landing we are. The height value is just how far the rocket is above the pad in number of pixels. At the moment, we're not using a curve at all in this project, so the curve output is directly connected to the landedness. So when I press the auto land button, the rocket will land with a linear function. This linear function certainly succeeds in getting our rocket from the sky onto the pad, but it just doesn't look right. If you take a look in the inspector, notice that I've exported the landedness variable so that we can change it manually and take a look at the values along any point in the landing procedure. Let's take a quick look at the script attached to the root node and add a curve resource to our project. We want to add a curve resource such that the landedness value inputs into our curve and outputs into the curve output variable. First I'll declare a curve resource and I'll be sure to export it so that it's visible in the inspector. Second, I'll connect the landedness and curve output values via the curves interpolate method. The interpolate method takes in an input x and exports a value y that is determined by the curve that we make visually in the inspector. In the inspector, locate our new landing curve, select the empty field, and select new curve. Right click on the graph to open a menu. Here we have the option to add a point or load a preset. I'll select the linear preset for now. I'll run the project and demonstrate the effect that the preset curves have on our rocket's landing. Using a linear curve, our landedness and curve output remain the same as if we didn't even have a curve at all. However, if we select presets such as Ease In and Ease Out, we can see that the landedness and the curve output begin to change relative to each other. This means that as the landedness value proceeds from 0 to 1, we have the ability to control the speed of the rocket at any given point using a curve. To change the curve, you can drag the existing points around the graph and change their slope, as well as add as many points as you would like to get the shape that you desire. I should also note that this specific example of moving a rocket around the screen could also be done using the animation player. But if what you're trying to do is simply interpolate between one value to another using a custom function, a curve is probably what you want to use and is easy to quickly change because of the visualization in the inspector. Also, you can make a change to the curve in the inspector while your game is running and immediately see the results.
Once you get a curve the way you want it, you can save or load it. Just right click on the curve field to open the resource menu. Now that we understand a little bit more about Godot's curve resource, let's take a look at one of the ways I've used curves in my new game prototype that I've been calling Project Root. In this game world, everyone lives in a giant plant. You play a traveler, and the principal way of travel through this plant is via skydiving through it. You can't see my fingers, but I'm doing air quotes around the word sky. I've been working on it for a few days, and at the moment it looks like this. In this project, I use a curve to fine-tune how quickly the player reaches terminal velocity when falling through the plant world. But the uses of curves are pretty much endless, and they are especially useful for fine-tuning game feel. Do you need a dampening effect on your camera? Use a curve. Need to control the fade-in and fade-out between scenes? You can use curves for that too. The possibilities are endless. Well that'll do for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that I was able to show you something useful. If I did, consider hitting the like button, and if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe and hit the bell icon. If you want to stay in touch and follow things that I do, like Project Root, look for me on Twitter via the link in the description below. Hope to see you in the next video, until then, put those curves to good use.